I hit the city and I lost my band I watched the needle take another man Gone, gone, the damage done Folks, as I record this video, it's Sunday night, March 29th uh, I've been wanting to make this video all weekend I just haven't had time One of the posts I made on Facebook, I think Friday night It was one of my general criticisms of the place Well, somewhere or another in the comments uh, Over the weekend into Saturday It, it got into dr uh, drug legalization Versus drug prohibition In this post I made, it got a lot of uh, uh, people looking at it, so every time I get a lot of people looking at one of my posts, I, I just I, I get a lot of likes. I mean, which is good, but I, these cop syncophants and these anti-drug people they slither slither out of the dark holes they live in and come in and start writing crap on my Facebook page. And uh, one person in, in particular, a real uh, sanctimonious and pompous ass, uh, you know, started writing all kinds of crap. And in fact, I quoted one of the things he wrote and uh, he says drugs have and will continue to, to destroy millions of lives worldwide every day and he's talking to me and you are lucky if you have never seen what drugs like this do to people firsthand but if you have <laughs> this was a long run on sentence but if you haven't maybe you should go spend some time with crackheads and then see if you think drugs should still be legal you know this kind of ties in with my last rant that i made about the uh, the know what know your rights know what alls you all know what better than me they all know better than me they all got some inside knowledge they all know it better than me well you know you know you get this condescending crap like this oh, well this guy like this guy's all against drugs so i'm i doubt he hangs out with crackheads I, I doubt he knows anything has any friends or knows anything about people that use drugs and i'm saying illegal drugs and i see that's the thing he probably thinks alcohol and cigarettes are are fine and i'm gonna talk more about that here in just a minute he probably thinks that's all fine it's just these drugs which when, when they say that they really mean illegal drugs because uh, you, you know, of course, you're begging the question when legal drugs are okay and then illegal drugs are not okay. Well, you're begging the question why are, are some legal and some not legal? Anyway, but this guy knows it all more than me. I, you know, I don't know anything. I've never seen any anything bad happen from a drug addiction. What what is this guy thinking? I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'm 50 years old. I've been practicing law for 16 years. I've seen it all. I've seen, the, I've seen the people addicted to meth. I've seen the people addicted to cocaine. Uh, every once in a while, I get a heroin case. Uh, you know, on my caseload, 80% of my caseload is drugs, and half of that's probably marijuana. The other half is is almost always meth because I do a lot of meth cases. And then there's a sprinkling in of crack and cocaine. I've had a heroin case a time or two. So I've seen it all. I've seen it all. But I want, I want to talk to you. I want, and I, this guy, if you're watching, I want to talk to you about someone I know that died from her drug addiction. My mother died from her drug addiction. So I know all about how bad drugs are. My mother is dead because of her lifelong drug addiction. I know all about it. In fact, let me show you a picture of my mother. I keep her picture up here with my little religious icons. Here's my mother. We went out to, I would take, before she died, I took her out to dinner. Every Saturday night, this is one of those times. She died of cancer, directly linked to her smoking cigarettes for as long as she did. She started smoking when she was in high school. She told me she started smoking cigarettes when she was in high school. So my whole life of knowing my mother, she always had a cigarette in her hand. All day long, she smoked cigarettes. All day long. The funny thing is, when she first got ill, uh, actually, I think it was a, a year or two before she first got cancer, she quit smoking, just cold turkey, quit smoking. And I guess for the, her last 10 years of her life were uh, drug-free, cigarette-free. 
but the damage had already been done because it was only a few years uh, after she quit smoking that she got cancer the first time. Anyway, I saw my mother die. It, for, for, she got cancer once, she got cancer twice, and then the third time she was dead. It took, once we figure out something was wrong, uh, she died about three weeks later, and I watched it all. And I saw my mother die, and she's just as dead as anybody that, who died from meth, heroin, cocaine, or any other drug. See, guys like the sac sanctimonious pump and ass, they, they're going to say, oh, well, cigarettes, oh, that's different. Oh, it's is it different? Is my mother's death any different than anybody who died from any drug? Yeah, tell me it's different, Mr. Pompous Ass. Now, would I ever want cigarettes to be illegal? No. Would I rather my mother been locked up in a in a government cage down there at the prison house for her entire life because she had a drug addiction? Would I have wanted her locked up in a cage? I, I thought that would have been the better way to handle it. No, I didn't want to see my mother locked in a cage because she was a drug addict. You, you, you prohibitionists, you people just make me sick. See, you can't be reasoned with. There's no reason to, 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 to what your thinking process. All you people know is power and control. And that's all you want. You want power and control over people. You want, through the government, you want to rule over other people's lives because you think you're better than them because you don't use drugs and you're going to exercise your power and your control over the lives of others. You have no reason. There is no reasoning to you. And, so, and I tried to uh, make some posts and talk to this guy and he was just being a complete sectum on his pump and his ass. So I just, I withdrew from the conversation. You know, I think some of you are still over there arguing with him from that post from Friday night. Well, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with these prohibitions. Again, there's no reason. They don't have, they can't think. They can't comprehend things. They can't reason. It's all about, you know, power and control. There is no reason to it. It's just, you just want power. You want to rule over other people's lives and you want to lock people in a cage. You want to take them off the street and lock them in, the, in a cage for years and years, sometimes life. Because it makes you feel good and powerful that you can exercise your authority over the lives of other people. What is it with these people who want to control other people's lives? I don't understand it. Is it a good thing that some people are addicted to heroin or meth addicts? No. Well, what the answer is to, we're going to, it, it ruins you like this. What did he say? Oh, it ruins millions of lives. Oh, well, so what does it do to someone's lives to lock them up in a cage? For years and years, I've been practicing law for 15, 16 years now. So I've been in it long enough. I've seen people go off to prison for a meth case. They go off to prison. They're in there three, four years. They get out. Two, three months later, they're arrested again for meth. And then they're caught. Did I say two, three years later? I think I meant to say two or three months. I, I, I can speak of one guy specifically. I'll, fact, I'll, I'll tell you more about this guy. He hires me up. Possession of meth case, and I think he had a prior felony. Uh, but, but anyway, we were gonna. It was probably gonna be a probation case. Probably, we're probably gonna get a probation. Well, while he's out on bond, and that case is pending, he gets another meth case. Well, when that happens, you're almost you're almost certainly gonna get prison time. You know, you know when you commit a new crime, a new felony, when you're out on probation for a felony, you're almost certainly they're the DA is gonna want prison. And I, and I think he had had another meth case in the past, so that that hurt, you know, didn't help the situation either. So he goes off to prison. He went to prison. I don't know. He actually spent maybe a year or two. Gets out. Three, four months later, he's calling me up. He's got another meth case. So how's this? How's this locking people up for drug crimes? How's that working out for you, Mr. Sacrimonious, pompous ass? How's that working out for you? I've seen it over these people. They go off to prison. I've had, had a lot of meth lab cases. They go off to prison. They come back within months. They're they're right back arrested again. What is it? What's the point? What is it solving? Again, it's really not solving anything. And I I think these prohibitionists know it doesn't solve anything. Again, they just want power and control. It's all about power and control over over other people's lives. They want to reign over other people's lives and tell other people what they can and cannot put in their body. 
and they probably would if they if they could they probably would like to have the power to tell you what you could put in your mind so they would like to control what books you can read and if you read the wrong book off to prison lock you up in a cage what I said you bet you can't reason with these people and then you tell these people you tell these prohibitionists whether they know this before you tell them or not I don't know because it's pretty common knowledge you tell them and you tell these people in the United States of America the supposedly the freest country in the entire world we're supposedly the freest country in the entire world we lock up more people in prison both in raw numbers and per capita we lock more people up than the entire world than any other country in the entire world and you tell it to these people and they're just like oh, 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 we need to lock more oh, i need to have more power and control we need to lock more with these druggies we need to send them all to prison so let's send everyone to prison and us taxpayers will pay for it well how's that working out for you prohibitionists how is that working out has it stopped anything have people quit using drugs because you've locked them up for five, ten years? I, I, again, you these people they have no reason. You can't they can't reason things. They can't comprehend things. All they know is they want to put people in prison. That's it. It's like these these DAs I deal with on a on a daily basis. Their caseload just like my caseload. Their caseload seventy five eighty percent drugs, and they're just over there. Let's lock them up. This guy's going to prison. Nope, sorry. I, how can they go home and sleep at night? Sending, you know, I go home at night and I have nightmares because my, because all these people, all my clients I see going off to prison. Not only my clients, but just other people, other people's clients. You sit there, you sit there in a in a, a two hour court docket and you just see these people. They keep coming up in front of the judge. Almost eighty percent of them drunks. You know, and I may be off, but you know, maybe twenty percent are, are real crimes. Like someone murdered someone, someone shot somebody, somebody burglarized the house. Everyone else, they're all drugs. And the judge sits up there, off to prison with you, off to prison with you, off to prison with you. You know, I mean, they all don't go to prison. Some people get probation. But so what? Even if you get probation. Yeah, you're not locked in a cage, but here you are. You're under the uh, power and authority of some probation officer, and you got to do this and do that, and take piss tests and all this and that. What, what, what is this solving? Sending all these people to prison for drugs. What I just... And again, you know, and they all know it better than me, you know, uh, uh, you know, well, this guy, yeah, this guy tells me, go spend some time with some crack, and he, like, I'm sure he does, I'm sure he hangs out down to the crack house uh, every night with his buddies, <laughs> I don't know, this guy, he, his Facebook page said his job's the Marines, so I, I really doubt he hangs out with crackheads, anyway, again, I'm tired of you prohibitionists, I'm sick of listening to your crap, I mean, I'm just sick of it. To, to me, and to the way I think, you know, seven years ago, eighty, how long ago, in, in Germany, we, we, well, not we, but some people, the Nazis, they rounded up the Jews and they put them in concentration camps. Now, I'm not even going to talk about sending them to the gas chamber to be killed, because some people say, oh, you, you're, you're comparing the two. Well, no, let's just talk about just rounding them up and lock them in a cage, because that's what we do with drug addicts. We round them up, lock them in a cage. To me, it makes as much sense to round up someone because they're Jewish and lock them in a cage. It makes the same amount of sense to do that as it does to round someone up because they're a drug addict and lock them in a cage. You know, and I did a lot of posts uh, last month, I guess it was, or was it earlier this month? I, yeah, earlier this month in March about the, the anniversary in Selma. Again, it makes the same amount of, uh, of uh, sense. When, when black folks were trying to get in line to register to vote and the cops come out there and beat the shit out of them hit them with billy sticks and you said no you're not going to vote and then they said well we're going to we're going to protest this we're going to have a march to the capitol and we're going to protest and the cops say no you're not and they go out there and beat the holy living crap out of them with billy sticks and you know some of them were injured very severely beating beating in the head i think john lewis had a fractured skull all because they want to march in protest not being registered to vote just because they're black folks See, it, 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 to me, there's no, there's, it's the same thing. So, so because someone's addicted to a drug, or, or even if they're not addicted, they're just, they just have a drug in their pocket, some cocaine, some, uh, uh, some meth. We're gonna lock them up in a cage because of that. I, I don't understand this thinking. I don't understand this thinking. And something else I want to say when I would talk about my mother, I, I've had other drug addiction problems in our in my family. 
more, you know, I've had, there's other, lot, almost all the people in my family smoke cigarettes. I'm one of the few that don't. Uh, I, we've had uh, alcohol problems in my family. We've had uh, pill, you know, the prescription pill problems. We've had the meth problems. So I know all about it. So don't lecture me, prohibitionism. You should give me some cash. And yeah, then you'll understand because you don't know anything and I know it all because I'm better. I know it all. I've had it in my family. I've had close friends, very close friends with drug problems. I know all about it. But my answer is not lock them up in a cage. I don't want my family members locked in a cage for years. We'll deal with the drug problem. We'll deal with it. We don't need them locked in a cage. Why? Or my close friend. I don't want my close friends locked in a cage because they got a drug problem. I'll do anything for my family members or my friends. I'll help them any way I can. But if they don't want help and they want to be a drug addict, then I, this is, that's the way it's going to be. They don't need to be locked in a cage. You know, and, I, and I've known people, some of my clients, some of my meth addict clients, they, they hold down a job. They're all not dregs on society. So a lot of these people, serious drug addicts, they still hold down a job. They still go to work. You know, and then they get arrested. You know, they get pulled over. Next thing you know, they get arrested and then off to prison. And then us taxpayers pay for it. I don't get it. Uh, again, you can't reason with the prohibitionists. There's no reason. Because all they want is power and control. They just want to have power and control over other, other people's lives. They want a society like Orwell's 1984, where the government rules over all of us and tells us what we can and can't do, what we can and can't think. I swear that's what they want. I don't, what, I don't understand what these people, what, why they got to have power and control over someone who chooses to use a drug. I don't care. If you want to use drugs, I don't care. And then, oh, and then, you know, then those, oh, <laughs> what if they go, they get a, a drug addict, so they go steal uh, to, to feed their addiction. Well, we'll deal with the stealing. Stealing's wrong. If you steal for whatever reason, I don't care what the reason is, if you steal from someone, then you go to court and you pay for the consequences. But we don't make something illegal because if it's not illegal, that might lead to other crimes. It's, it doesn't make sense. I you know. I swear to God, I, 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 these prohibitions, I, I think they get some kind of sexual gratification. I think they get an, a, some kind of orgasm over seeing people go to prison. You tell these people, the, we, uh, the United States locks up more people in the country in the world, and they don't care. They're like, oh, I, I don't care. Let's send more. We need, to, we need to make more crimes, and we need, we need to have tougher punishments for drug crimes. I swear to God, I don't understand these people's minds and, the, and these DAs down here in, at, at the courthouse that just send people to prison. What? How is that in their mind? How do they feel good about that? How do they feel good about that? How do they go home and sleep at night? I don't. I don't understand it. I, you're a disturbed individual. You're very sick and you're very disturbed if you get some kind of gratification for sending someone to prison because they use drugs or they got some some dried plant in their pocket or, or some white powder in their pocket. You're, you're disturbed. You're sick. I'm sorry. You don't like it? Well, I have to say that's tough because you're sick. Because you people, you just want power and control over other lives. And when you see, you see people get locked in prison, it gives you some kind of gratification. Anyway, that's my rant for tonight. Thanks for listening. It won't be my last rant about this because, you know, things aren't getting any better. We're just sending more and more and more people to prison. It's, it's never, never going to stop. You know, and, and that's one of my concerns is... These these prohibitionists and these people that want power and control, I think, I think they make up about fifty percent of the population, maybe even more fifty percent. That's yeah, that's a problem. When you got fifty percent of the population that wants to ha have power and control over everyone's lives, over over the lives of everyone else, you got a problem. Because they want it's not just about drugs. They want power and control. They want to control us to every extent they can. If they don't agree with it, 
well, by God, you're not going to do it. And if you do it, you're going to prison. You know, anyway, that's my rant for the night, folks. Thanks for listening. I sing and, uh, the song because I love the man. I know that some of you don't understand. Milk blood to keep from running out. I've seen the